Today, via a really nice example, we're going to go over the general strategy of transforming a well-known sum identity into what I'll call a crazy sum identity. Well, this crazy sum identity might also be well-known, but maybe a little bit less well-known, and it might involve some crazy looking terms. So let's start with our well-known identity. So we're going to look at the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n over 2n plus 1. Let's notice that this is simply the sum of the reciprocals of the odd numbers. So we've got 1 over 1 minus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5 minus 1 over 7 and so on and so forth. Now, a lot of you guys watching may know what this sums to, but we're going to derive this just kind of for completeness. Okay, so let's first note that this is equal to the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of, let's see, we'll have minus 1 to the n times x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1, where we've done an evaluation from x equals 0 to x equals 1. So what I've done is I've taken my sum and I've rewritten it as what I like to call a zeroth integral, which is simply a function evaluated at two endpoints. But from here, what we can do is apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to turn this zeroth integral into a first integral. So that means I can take a derivative of this term right here and change this into an integral. So let's do that. So this is going to be equal to the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity, and then we'll have minus one to the n times the integral from zero to one of x to the two n dx where when taking the derivative, the 2n plus 1 cancel the 2n plus 1 in the denominator. And now we're going to do my favorite trick, which I still have never proven on the channel at least, and that is to exchange the order of summation and integration. So let's do that. But before we do that, let's kind of separate these things so we don't get confused over where the equalities go. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this as the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of minus x squared all to the n power dx, where I combine that minus 1 to the n and that x to the 2n kind of into this nice package. But now let's notice that this sum here, which I'm putting this magenta box around, is in fact a geometric series. And so that means we can apply the geometric series summation formula. So let's do that. That'll give us the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. So recall that it's 1 over 1 minus the common ratio when we have this simple setup like this. So we're subtracting minus x squared, giving us the 1 plus x squared. But now we've got a fairly simple integral to do. This is equal to the inverse tangent. So we've got the arc tan of x evaluated from 0 to 1. Evaluating at 1 gives us pi over 4. Evaluating at 0 gives us 0. So reading this from the extreme left to right hand side, we've got our starting well-known identity. Okay, so let's put the well-known identity over here as well as our transformation tool. So moving on, we'll start with our well-known identity, which we just derived. The sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n over 2n plus 1 is pi over 4. And we're going to apply something called Euler's transformation. And broadly, this is something known as an uh, accelerator of convergence of series. And so there are a bunch of different acceleration of convergence techniques, and this is simply one of them. And I think I'll maybe put a proof of this on the second channel math major. It'll be a little bit technical, so I think maybe its home is better suited over there. So that's my second channel. Okay, so this says that the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n a sub n is the same thing as the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n over 2n plus 1, 
And embedded inside that sum is the sum as k goes from zero to n of minus one to the k, n choose k, a sub n minus k. So you notice that this two to the n plus one in the denominator is making each successive term of this accelerated series smaller and smaller and smaller. And so since each successive term is much smaller than what we started with, then we definitely have something that's getting closer to this limit more quickly. And you might say, well, what about this sum over here? Does that cause some problems? But in fact, it doesn't. And you can quickly see why that doesn't because the sum of binomial coefficients, not considering this a sub n minus k term, sums up to like two to the n. Okay, so now let's apply this Euler transformation to our starting series. So it's gonna look something like this. We have the sum as n goes from zero to infinity minus one to the n over two to the n plus one, so that doesn't change. And next we'll have the sum as k goes from zero to n of minus one to the k, and then the binomial coefficient n choose k, and then a sub n minus k. So that will be one over 2n minus k plus 1. So we have something like that. So just to reiterate, my a sub n term, since we have alternating built into the formula over here, is simply 1 over 2n plus 1, meaning that this is clearly my a sub n minus k term. And now let's take this second sum and re-index a little bit and we'll re-index it by replacing every k with n minus k. So I'll just put k is replaced with n minus k like that. And then let's note that that will give us n choose n minus k in the binomial coefficient, but luckily that's the same thing as n choose k. So that's good because we don't have to change the binomial coefficient. Okay, so let's see what that gives us we'll be left with this outer sum, which is n goes from zero to infinity of minus one to the n over two to the n plus one. And then our inner sum still goes from zero to n. It's just that it's going in the reverse direction, but that's totally okay. Notice if n minus k equals zero, the lower bound, then n equals k, that's the new upper bound. Furthermore, if n minus k equals n, then k equals zero. So that's the new lower bound. It just switches the order of summation. But like I said, that doesn't change anything. Okay, now we have this sum as k goes from zero to n, and then we'll have minus one to the n minus k, and then we'll have n choose k, and then one over two k plus one. Okay, so that's looking good. Now I'd like to note that n minus k has the same parity as n plus k, so I can replace this minus sign with a plus sign, because minus one to the n minus k will always have the same sign as minus one to the n plus k. Now let's see where we can go from there. I can bring this minus one to the n out, that'll give me minus one to the two n, but that minus one to the two n is always gonna be one. So I've got the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of one over two n plus one, and then inside I'll have the sum as k goes from zero up to n of minus one to the k, and then I have n choose k one over two k plus one. So something like that. But now I'm gonna do essentially the same thing that I did before, and I'll replace this one over two k plus one with x to the two k plus one evaluated from zero to one. So thinking about this as a zeroth integral, and then apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to turn it into a first integral. Then we'll have the sum as n goes from zero to infinity, one over two to the n plus one, that's my outer term. And then the sum as k goes from zero to n of minus one to the k n choose k, and then the integral from zero to one of x to the two k dx. Okay, so now let's bring this up to the top and we'll keep going. So here's where we left off. And now we're going to focus on this stuff that I'm underlining in blue. So let's see what that'll give us. 
I can very easily uh, change the order of summation and integration here because I have a finite sum. That should be k going from zero to n. So that's not problematic at all. That'll leave me with the integral from zero to one, and then I have the sum as k goes from zero up to n of minus one to the k, n choose k, x squared to the k. I think that's probably the best way to look at that. But next up, we can again use one of our tricks that we saw on the previous example, and that is combine this minus one to the k and this x squared to the k into minus x squared to the k. And that gives us the sum as k goes from zero to infinity of n choose k minus x squared to the k, but that's exactly our binomial expansion formula. So that means that this whole thing can be rewritten as the integral from zero to one of one minus x squared to the n power dx. And I'm actually gonna set that equal to i n and then start with the fresh board because we need to calculate the value of i sub n. So we've accelerated our starting series to this sum as n goes from zero to infinity of i sub n over two n plus one, where i sub n is the integral from zero to one of one minus x squared to the n. Now we're ready to tackle this. And we'll do this with integration by parts. So let's start with u equals one minus x squared to the n power. So that's the entire integrand. But that means that our dv term will simply be dx. Okay, so that tells us that du is equal to minus two n times x times one minus x squared to the n minus one. And that's by using the chain rule carefully. And then v is simply equal to x. Okay, so let's maybe box that because this is what we'll use to simplify our i sub n integral. And now we're gonna use the standard integration by parts formula that says the integral of u dv is equal to u v minus the integral of v du. Okay, great. So let's see, we have u times v, so that'll be x times one minus x squared all to the n power evaluated from x equals zero to x equals one, and then minus the integral of v du. So that'll be plus two times n times the integral from zero to one of x squared and then one minus x squared to the n minus one power and then dx. And now let's note that this term is simply equal to zero. That's because if we evaluate it at one, we get zero. And if we evaluate it at zero, we also get zero. Next up, let's cleverly rewrite this x squared as follows. I'd like to write it as one minus one minus x squared. Okay. So let's see what that'll leave us with. So we'll have this is equal to 2n and then times a bunch of stuff. I'll have all of the stuff with a 1 first. That'll be the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus x squared to the n minus 1 dx. And then minus what comes from the 1 minus x squared term. So that'll be the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus x squared to the n power, because that gets boosted back up. But let's notice that this term right here is simply our i sub n integral. Whereas using this notation right here, this first term is our i sub n minus one integral. So in the end, we have i sub n is equal to two n times i n minus one minus i n. So now we can solve for i n in terms of i n minus one. So I'll let you guys check that carefully, but what you end up with is i n is equal to two to the two times n over two n plus one times i n minus one. But now we can inductively go all the way down to i zero, and what we'll see is that i sub n is in fact equal to 2n double factorial over 2n plus one double factorial. And you might say, well, what's a double factorial? Well, that's just where you skip one in your descending product. 
So just as an example, six double factorial is six times four times two. And then five double factorial would be five times three times one and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's maybe insert this value of i sub n up here and then simplify it a bit. So this is where we are so far. We've got our starting sum, which let's recall we know the value of that is equal to this new sum, which is the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of one over two n plus one times two n double factorial. Now, what I'd like to note first is that I can take this 2n plus 1 and I'll rewrite it as 2 to the n and I'll multiply 2 on both sides of this equation. So that'll be one thing that I want to do. Another thing that I'd like to do is simplify this 2n double factorial. So let's maybe do that right here. So let's also notice that 2n double factorial can be nicely simplified. That's 2n times 2n minus 2 times 2n minus 4, all the way down 4 times 2. And then I'm going to take each of these terms and split them. So this will be 2 times n. This term right here will be 2 times n minus 1. This term right here will be 2 times n minus 2, all the way down here. This term right here is 2 times 2. And then this last term is 2 times 1. So let's notice that we can put all of these twos together into just a two to the n power because we've got n terms in our product. And then we can put everything left over into something nice as well. Notice we have n times n minus one times n minus two all the way down to two times one. So in the end, that turns into two to the n times n just single factorial. Okay, so now let's finish it off. We have two times our original sum. Our original sum had the value of pi over four. So that means we have two times pi over four, which is pi over two, is the same thing as the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of this two n double factorial, which I can factor as two to the n times n factorial. That cancels this two to the n. So I have n factorial over two n plus one double factorial. And so we have our final value or maybe our final transformation of our well-known identity into a crazy identity. Another thing that I'd like to point out is that in an integral calculus class, or maybe in the US, this is known as a calculus two class, you're often not found to not asked to find this sum, but you would be asked to show that this series converges. But the techniques you need to find the actual value of the sum are out of reach for a class like that. So I think this is a nice opportunity to take this standard homework problem from Calculus 2 and find the value instead of just showing that it converges. Also, if you like this video, I've got lots of other summation videos on the channel. There should be one on the screen right now if you'd like to check it out. And that's a good place to stop.